Domine Pater, et Filii, et et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. <coughs> Calendar. So we hear about those, those two saints. Uh, first, Saint Casimir. Uh, he was born in the year 15, or 1458 to King Casimir IV of Poland, and he was raised as any royal son would be raised, trained to inherit the kingdom after his father. But he had a, very, a private tutor, a very holy priest by the name of John Douglas, who inspired him with a love of the heavenly kingdom uh, even more than this one. So St. Casimir was very much inspired by this and began to live the, the life of what we would say um, a monk even there in the royal court. As he, and he's a young man. He's uh, 10, 11, 12 years old and he's wearing hair shirts. He's doing all night vigils. He's spending time in prayer and so on. Uh, in fact, he viewed his royal uh, status, his, his, uh, the son of the king, as actually um, a kind of a curse, a prison. Uh, he wanted to be like everybody else. He wanted to be poor, unknown, despised, a peasant. Um, but nope, he was, a, he was the son of the king and he had, was constantly having to learn about, you know, dancing and courtly etiquette and warfare, which is something he didn't like at all. Actually, he did not like learning about um, uh, battle. And in fact, when Casimir was 13, his father placed him at the head of an army and they were um, invading Hungary and he was supposed to take command. And he was very much opposed to this. He, like, he didn't like this at all, but this, this is where the saints, this is, this is their, their struggles. He felt obligated uh, from piety to obey the wishes of his father. So he went ahead and he, he took command of this army and he was just a figurehead in any case, um, but the campaign failed. Uh, actually, and the troops deserted, and it was just, it was disarray, and Ka St. Casimir comes back in disgrace. And his father puts him in prison, locks him in a tower for three months. And St. Casimir, uh, this was a vacation for him. Like, he loved it. Um, finally, it's like, if I, can, I can be at peace, I can get quiet. So he spent three months in the prison. He slept on the floor, which he did anyways. His diet was, was poor, which he was accustomed to anyways. I uh, finally had time for, for prayer and quiet. So um, his father's like, okay, this is not working. So he, he, he takes him out again. And later he tries to arrange a marriage between Casimir and um, the daughter of the emperor, Emperor uh, Friedrich III. Um, but Casimir refused. He, he had took a vow, taken a vow of uh, uh, celibacy, vowed his virginity to God. So um, he's just like, you know, as far as the king is concerned, he's, he's like a terrible prince. Like you're gonna be the worst king ever. He would have been fantastic. Um, from the spiritual perspective. Uh, but when he was in his early 20s, he uh, contracted a lung disease and he died at the age of 25. A uh, young man, but uh, an excellent, excellent example there of a pious and disciplined life, uh, despite being surrounded by the luxuries of court. Um, and this, this actually made him um, uh, very, very popular with the, with the common people. He was very popular. And um, so they, they began to venerate him uh, basically immediately upon his death. Um, one of his favorite hymns was a Latin hymn called Omni Die Dic Maria, which means daily, daily sing to Mary. So he didn't, he didn't invent it, but it was just one of his favorite hymns. And uh, because it was so popular with him, uh, sometimes it's, it's referred to as St. Casimir's hymn. Now, um, one of the miracles attributed to St. Casimir occurred around 30 years after his death. Uh, and this was, um, there was a city in Lithuania being attacked by Russians. And so Poland sent some troops to relieve them. Uh, so, uh, and remember St. Casimir, he was, he was a, a Polish saint, right? He was a prince of Poland. So Lithuania is being attacked by the Russians. Poland is sending troops to relieve them. And these troops come up upon a, a wide river. They can't cross. Uh, they had an apparition of St. Casimir and he showed the Polish troops where to go. Uh, they crossed the river, they relieved the city there in Lithuania, and the Russians uh, abandoned the attack. For this reason, St. Casimir is the patron saint of Lithuania. So he, he's, he's not, he wasn't Lithuanian, but because of that, because of his intercession, the Lithuanians took him as their patron saint. And every year in Lithuania, they have St. Casimir's festival. And that's going to be this coming weekend, uh, the 5th, 6th, and 7th, right? Hopefully that, that doesn't get ruined by COVID. Uh, but they have pastries, they have a festival, they have a fair, and it is for this Polish saint. Uh, so quite um, uh, the, the influence. We see that, right? Uh, what do we say that? Um, uh, the Catholic Church is multicultural, right? There's a big, big term these days, but we see it right there. And the Catholic Church is very much against 
um, warfare, right? It is a, a just war, but it needs to be um, uh, proportionate. It needs to be for a good reason. And so we, we can't, St. Casimir there, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.